Friends and family, we want to thank you for your presence here today. The Word of God tells us precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And so today we're here to go forward and celebrate life and to worship together. And as we do that, I pray that God would just allow us that opportunity to think on how good he's been to us. And not that we would go in sorrow as the world does, but that we would rejoice and we would celebrate life. So as we do that, would you go with me to the Lord in prayer? Father, we thank you today for your love. We thank you for this special day. We thank you for the opportunity we have to celebrate life, to praise your name. God, there's some very special people that will have a part in this service today, and we ask your absolute blessing on them. For those in attendance today, let them know that we're not coming here because we're unsure about the whereabouts of our dearly departed, but, Lord, that we're absolutely certain that you've taken part in this and that we can celebrate and be satisfied with what you've done. Help us to do that now. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Ashley Ann Golden. I am Jack Cravey's second grandchild and one of his two granddaughters. Um, I first want to thank you for being here on behalf of the family. There's also some other people that I need to make sure I thank right at the beginning. The first person is Granny Ruth. I hope one day to be the wife that she has been to Papa Jack. 
her dedication as a caregiver and as a faithful wife um, is just tremendous. Um, also to Daddy, Amanda, and Andy, and Chelsea and Bobby as well. All of us have been blessed to play a part in taking care of Papa as he has taken care of us through all these years. Um, I also want to thank Dr. Clay Carter and the Hospice, uh, Hospice Satilla House. Um, they were so caring to Papa and such a blessing to our family. Thank you as well. And, and lastly, I just wanted to thank Brother Phil and the members of Haywood Baptist as well as other family members who have walked with Papa in his last days. I know everything you said, everything you did meant so much to him and Granny. What I want to talk about today is some of the titles that Papa Jack had. And the first one was he was a son. He was born in 1934 in Telfair County, and he grew up in Appling County, um, a son of an agricultural community. He learned hard work through hard work. Um, his parents instilled that in him, that you live off the land, you work the land, and that's you, you receive as a fruit of those labors. Um, and that hard work guided him throughout his life. Um, he was the second child of six children, so obviously growing up in a big family. And I know the love he had for each of his brothers and sisters as well as their families. Papa was a veteran, and he was a patriot. I can't think of anything more fitting than for him to rest beneath our nation's flag. The flag meant so much to him, not only having served under that flag, but to live under the freedom that that flags represent. And he wanted to make sure that his family never forgot that that our freedom comes first from God and from the blood, sweat, and tears of those that defend our nation. He was drafted twice during the Korean War. The first time he served, went to Korea, and came back home and thought, well, I, I did my duty, I'm done. Unfortunately, he was drafted again. Um, we think that was probably by accident, but he was never bitter about it. Um, he thought that was just another opportunity for him to serve his country. When he was in the service, he was a mailman. Um, he loved to tell stories about being there in Korea. And one of my favorites was when one of the men in his company got in a little bit too much trouble back home when he was on leave. And he knew that a letter was coming in from the local sheriff of that county about the escapades of that individual soldier. That soldier came to Papa all upset about it, and he told him, you don't, take, you don't worry about that, I'll take care of it. Somehow that letter went missing. And he was proud of his service, and he believed firmly in the promise and the prosperity listed within our founding documents, and, uh, and instead of everything, that our nation is one nation under God. So very proud of that. Um, and he had a flag in his yard um, just about until the day he died. He was a patriot and proud of it. He was a railroad man. He was so proud of his dedication to one employer that he retired from, the time and service he put in at CSX, the things he did, and the employees he had the opportunity to work with. I know just from speaking to some of Papa's um, coworkers, how respected and valued he was there. He took pride in his work and he worked hard and he expected you to take pride in your work and work hard too. He had high expectations, but I know he was also a compassionate leader that left a lasting impression on those under his charge. When he retired, I guess that just wasn't quite enough railroad, so he worked for several additional years as a consultant buying rail cars. It wasn't uncommon to get stopped by a train in Waycross and to hear Papa say, I, I helped buy that car, I picked that car out. He took such pride in it, and I know his service was greatly appreciated by CSX. Papa was also a farmer. During the early years, he and Granny spent a lot of time raising plants and selling that as a side job. He was a cattle farmer. Growing up, I remember eating some of the best beef you've ever had in your mouth from the cattle that he raised there in his pasture. And when he had had enough of cattle, he got rid of the cows and planted a pecan orchard. And he loved that line of work as well. How fitting is it that his family selected a pecan wood casket to honor his memory? He was also a master gardener. Maybe one day I'll be able to grow tomatoes that large, squash that good, potatoes that good, but it's, I'm not there yet, but I'm still trying. He was also a meticulous lawn keeper. There was a lot of days I'd watch Papa Jack walk around his carpet-like yard, picking weeds by hand, making sure that none got in his grass. You could walk barefoot across his entire yard and not worry about any stickers because Papa had already taken care of that. He was a fisherman. 
He loved to fish and he loved to eat fish. Most of all, I guess he loved fishing in the Ottomahaw River. However, a lot of people wouldn't understand why someone that loved to fish as much as Papa Jack did had a ski boat. Papa would fish every time out of a chaparral ski boat. And I have all ideas that was because his kids and grandkids loved to ski. Papa also taught us that sometimes the fish you don't think are the greatest are actually pretty good. He loved catfish. He thought Sybils and Jessup had the best seafood buffet you could find and he ensured he ate it every Friday night and pretty much had a standing reservation. When that time came that Sybils was no longer there, he realized that Jerry Jays fried some pretty good shrimp. And that was his favorite Friday lunch. He loved the mountains, although this is hard to understand because you really couldn't get him out of Waycross for more than about 72 hours. He loved the mountains, he'd look at the mountains, and then it was time to come home and check on the farm. He was a craftsman. Papa could build just about anything. He built his house along with another individual and a lot of mom and dad's house too. A lot of the outbuildings you see at his home and mom and dad's home, Papa had a hand in in some way or another. He also built a lot of fun things for us kids. I remember when he built Andy a slingshot and probably regretted that decision. He also built the most intricate little wooden airplanes you've ever seen for the rest of us. He was a devoted husband. To Papa, love was a verb and he acted out on that every day. He told one of his buddies in high school as Granny walked in the room that he was gonna marry that girl, and sure enough, he did. He was a tremendous provider for his wife and family, doing whatever it took to ensure they had what they needed. He took care of his wife in sickness and health, living out his vows daily, especially when Granny was diagnosed with cancer over 30 years ago. Doing what most men may think twice about standing right by her, being there for her in each and every way. He would rather be at home with his wife than just about anywhere else. And 63 years of marriage filled with love, sacrifice, devo devotion, and tenderness is a true testament to that. The type of marriage that all of us wish to strive for. He was also an outstanding father. Again, love to him was a verb. And he took that very seriously and acted it out every day. His two children, my Aunt Sandy the oldest and my dad Timmy the youngest, were his true pride and joy. He was a father who raised and disciplined his kids the right way. But he was also a forgiven father. Even when his daughter decided to ride daddy's dirt bike across the concrete driveway while it was still wet. He was a tender and loving father who more than anything was always present. He was an encourager, an encouragement to his children, no matter what trials or circumstances they faced in life. Jack Cravey was there with his kids. He doted on Aunt Sandy, creating one of the most beautiful and spirited mothers and women anyone could ever meet. He taught and molded Dad to be an incredible man, husband, and father himself, of which I have so benefited from. He raised his family in church, and modeled a God-focused life for them. He ensured his children had everything they needed and most of what they wanted. He would do anything, to dress up as Santa Claus, take trips he probably didn't want to take, buy things he never understood, just to make sure his children were happy. He was an amazing grandfather. Again, to Papa, love was a verb, and he was gonna show you he loved you through his actions. You could always go to Papa Jack when you needed something. Just as he was a present father, he was a present grandfather. Anything we ever had, he was there. He probably had a soft spot for his granddaughters, whether that was teaching you to drive using the lawnmower or knowing that your granddaughter was coming to stay with you in the mountains and meticulously selecting wildflowers to make an arrangement in a Coke can and then making sure that you sat there and had coffee with her right there by that arrangement. His grandson was his legacy and a source of tr tremendous pride. I know he was so proud that Andy continued on his tradition of being a pecan farmer. And Andy also got that craftsman legacy too. He can build just about anything. Summers and time after school was often spent with Granny and Papa. 
Anyone that knew Jack Cravey knew that he wasn't always the most patient person. But when it came to his grandkids, patient abounded. I think this was most evident to me when I would get out of school as a 15-year-old with my learner's permit, walk outside, and Papa would be sitting there in the passenger seat of his Ford Explorer Sport Track truck. He never really said much. He let me drive, and we would go home listening to Paul Harvey's The Rest of the Story. The only time he decided he needed to correct my driving was when I ran a stoplight. He waited a mile or two, didn't make a big deal of it, and just looked over and said, Ashley Ann, next time you probably want to stop for that one. <laughs> he was our teacher. He never treated me any different when I wanted to learn something. Just because I was a girl, I still could hang out with Papa. Whether it was fishing or wanting to learn how to hook up the rotary motor, he'd say, let's go, and he'd teach me whatever I needed to know. He was quite the comedian if you got to know him good enough. He could make a wise crack with the best of them. He didn't quite understand this whole grand dog concept. But you know, he loved Zoe, Missy, Murphy, Drake, and Sammy, and of course, Aunt Sandy's late rebel, because we did. You knew to listen when he talked. He didn't say a lot, but when he said something, it meant something and it was important. He was also the biggest encourager in our lives. Whatever we did, he was there and he wanted to make sure we did it best. But what Papa would want me to talk about most of all is Jesus. Papa loved the church. He loved the people of the church. He was one of the first members of Jamestown Baptist when it was still a tent. He was a deacon at Jamestown Baptist and Rehoboth, and a point of personal pride to me, passed on this legacy when my dad was ordained. He was chairman of the deacons for 34 years, a faithful member of Haywood Baptist Church recently. He loved his pastors and supported the men that were called to be shepherds of the flock. He read his Bible every single day. I think he's told me he read it three times through and through, but he read it every single day. But his favorite was often the 23rd Psalm. Papa believed in tithing. He believed in being a steward of the treasures God entrusted to him. And in every church he went to, he made sure that he practiced this. He trusted God at his word, especially when God said heaven is real. Hell, unfortunately for the lost, is also real. Papa was an incredible man, a giant to our family, but he recognized his own fallible human nature and status as a sinner. But here's the good news. He believed the promise of Romans 10, 13, and that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Papa knew Jesus. He knew he needed Jesus to save him from his sin, and he accepted God's gift of salvation through the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross. And because of that, Papa committed his life to Jesus many, many years ago, and he lived that out every day. He wouldn't want anyone here to leave without ensuring that they have that same promise and that they would be with him one day. And not only that, but to share that promise of salvation with others. Jack Cravey is in heaven today. On Thursday, around 845, my grandfather came face to face with his Savior. And we'll miss him. We'll miss him an awful lot. But we'll see him again. And I hope that you will too. The last thing I want to do and I know this would be important to him, is to read the 23rd Psalm out of Papa's Bible. But he thought King David needed a little help, so he always had his little extra there at the end. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. 
my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Or as Papa would say, forever and ever and ever. Thank you. may sound a little bit weird, but I'm proud of that young lady right there. Ask her where she goes to church. Briarwood Baptist is where she goes to church. She knows what she's doing when she talks about the Lord. And uh, it's been a great, great year for us. It really has. If you had to pick a last year that you could have this be, how the Lord wound this up, I don't think it could have been any better. Just like Ashley Ann said, we ordained Timmy at Briarwood as a deacon. His daddy was able to be at that service. And I, whatever, whenever he mentioned that, with his daddy's health being a little bit, you know, we, we didn't want to do like a night service or anything like that, so we planned to do it. So it, without doubt, Mr. Jack could be a part of that service. I, w I wouldn't take gold for that. And then something we all share in common, we all like to grow gardens and do stuff like that. And so that last little garden we, we had out there at the home place, Mr. Jack got to go out and check on that. Gave him a little something to do every day. And that's kind of how he spent his days right up until the end. And I don't, I don't think anybody in this room could ask for any better than that, is that the Lord was kind to us and gave us this last little year to, to celebrate that. And uh, didn't get to know Mr. Jack very well, but I did get asked to be a part of this service. And they said that the worst thing in the world is a singing preacher, and next to that is a preaching singer. I'm not sure which one I am, but uh, I'm going to share a song with you. It's a new song to me, but it's important to this family, and I want you to just listen to the words of it. It talks a lot about what Ashley wound up with.
Well, good afternoon, and we are here to uh, commemorate and celebrate um, in what I'll call a wonderful life of Brother Jack Cravey, and I really believe that. And so anyway, I'm just thankful, you know, for um, the 22 years that Elaine and I were members at um, Jamestown, where we were saved, and, um, and it's good to see you here from Jamestown. And I love you all. And I tell you what, we go way back, and that was some good years, wasn't it, at Jamestown. And for the 22 years that we were there at Jamestown, um, Brother Jack Cravey was the chairman of the deacons for, how many did you say, Ashley Ann? 34. 34. That's what I thought. He was chairman of the deacons for 34 years at Jamestown, and that was some of the best of our years. That's a long time to be a deacon, but it's a long time to be the chairman of the deacons, isn't it, at any church. And um and, you know, hey, it was evident then, and it's evident now, that Brother Jack loved the Lord. And I say that because he loved the Lord's church. And it's ridiculous to say that you love the Lord and not love his church. And Brother Jack loved with all of his heart the church for all, for all of those years. I want to share, um, and I can, I'll say before I share one verse, and that is um, for Brother Eric, Brother Richard Golden, Brother Gene, any other ministers of the gospel, any other pastors. Brother Jack was a pastor supporter, absolutely, and he has me tremendously now let me tell you um, he didn't believe in messing and gammon he didn't he believed in ministry he didn't believe in a mess and if it was going to be a mess he was out of there and that kept me on my toes the eight and a half years that i've been his pastor and brother Ruth's pastor and from my perspective from a pastor's perspective they could be no better than y'all have been to me because they've prayed for me. And they believed in me. When I didn't believe in myself, they would believe in me and pray for me. And they love preaching. And preachers love people who love preaching, okay? And Brother Jack, if we were having like a sing, and nothing wrong with sings, but if we were to have a sing that night, Brother Jack and Miss Ruth wouldn't be there. <laughs> and they would tell me they weren't going to be there. I mean, they expected to hear the word. They loved the word and the proclaiming of the word, the preaching and teaching of the word. And that says a lot. And they loved the Lord's church, whatever church they was a part of. They were a great benefit and a blessing and contributed to that church and loved that church. And I'll tell you what, that's an example for all of us, isn't it? You don't fall out with the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is his church. You be very mindful and very respectful to the Lord's church. If you don't have anything good to say about the church, don't say anything at all. It's the bride of Jesus. He loves his church, wherever it is and wherever they are. The Bible says in Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 14, I think it is, that blessed are the dead 
who die in the Lord. From henceforth, that they may rest from their labors. And their works do follow them. In other words, we do good works for the Lord not to be saved, right? We do good works for the Lord because we are saved. They don't lead us to heaven, our good works. They follow us to heaven. And it's called eternal reward in heaven. And what that is, is benefits and reward that you never, ever stop reaping the benefits of. In other words, the influence of Brother Jack Cravey's life on me and on you and on us will live long after he's gone. And they didn't lead him to heaven, but they'll follow him to heaven, those good works. So everything we do in the name of our precious Lord, out of heart, a heart of love for Jesus, that will re- that will reap eternal reward in heaven. Reward that you'll never ever stop reaping the benefits of. And Brother Jack Cravey has really influenced me. I tell you what, every time I, I'm, I'm just about late for work, I think about Brother Jack Cravey was never late for work. Not one day, not one time. Is that right, Miss Ruth? He told me that. And I believe it. He was dependable. He was reliant. But mainly, he was faithful. If he was able to be in church, and if Miss Ruth and Brother Jack wasn't in church, they were not, I didn't have to wonder. I knew he literally, physically was not able to be there or he'd be there. And they would be there. And as a church member, I couldn't hope or ask for any better than they have been for the 22 years at Jamestown. And now the eight and a half years that I've been their pastor. And I appreciate the the Cravey family. And love all of you. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. The word blessed means happy, content, satisfied, fulfilled. Now that's not any of us here today, right? It's certainly not me. And I know it's not you. It's him. Not our blessed all of the dead. But blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. It's the born-again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's those that's been saved. The Bible says that the Spirit knoweth the Spirit, that we are the sons of God. You can just sense Christianity. It's so real. It's so right. It's so genuine. I sense that in Brother Jack. He sensed it in me. And the Spirit bore witness that we were both sons of God. And I loved and respected him, and he loved and respected me back. I use this verse on what I consider to be a saint of God. And I'm not talking about sinless perfection. Brother Jack wouldn't claim that, and I wouldn't claim that for him. There was only one. The Lord Jesus Christ was absolutely sinless. But a saint of God to me is a person who has known the Lord and loved the Lord and walked with the Lord and served the Lord for a long time, and that was Brother Jack. I miss Ruth. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. From henceforth that they may rest from their labors. We get older, we get tired. We're not able to do what we once could do. One person told me before the service, hey, we can do about everything we could do. We just can't do it 
as much or as long, something like that, and I say amen. <laughs> so our bodies get tired. Brother Jack is gone as far as he can go physically. I don't believe he could have pushed it any longer. <laughs> he hung on long as he could hang to the point that there was, getting no, there was no getting better. And when there's no getting no better, that is better to go home and be with the Lord. That they may rest from their labors. You know, the struggle for life and sickness and disease in a sin-cursed and fallen world is over with. Let's not get over, overly attached to this world. The Bible says we're temporary residents, sojourners, just passing through. This world is really not our home. But heaven is. And eternal life is an awful long time, isn't it? The Bible says our lives are as compared to eternity is as a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Now that's a ripe old age Brother Jack lived, but still, he wasn't here that long, was he? And neither will we be here that long. So the emphasis is to be on eternity. I believe I'll see Brother Jack. And the only way you, any of his precious family or friends, won't see Brother Jack is if you're in hell. And God Almighty has placed a cross in between you and hell. You don't have to go to hell. You can turn to Jesus and ask him to save you and to forgive you. And he'll cleanse you. And he'll give you a brand new nature and a brand new life, that is salvation. You see, just as God makes provision for his children while we're alive, and he does, he, almost, he also makes pre provision for his children when they die. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I've heard people talk about and teach about purgatory. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Brother Jack's already seen Jesus. He's already seen Sandy. And that's a wonderful thought. And thinking of Brother Jack Cravey. And think about his precious family. Is a wonderful thought to me. God bless you. Let's pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father. In your holy presence. We pray your blessings down from heaven to be upon Brother Jack's family. We love him. Not in the past tense, but in the present tense. We love knowing that he knew Jesus. And that he was saved. He had been born again. And now he's in heaven. But our concern is not for him, for I believe he's better off than we are this afternoon but our concern is for his family we so love his family we pray your blessings upon his family in Jesus name we pray amen